Alright, thanks for watching and today I want to solve a very neat problem that's intriguing me a little bit um, because at the end you'll see there's an interesting phenomena going on and I personally don't know really why this works but it's very nice. So consider the following function f of x1, x2 up to xn which is just square root of x1 square plus dot 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 plus xn square. And the first question, not too bad, is find all the partial derivatives of f. So find fx1, fx2, dot dot dot, up to fxn. Okay, that one, as I said, not the worst problem in the world. So you calculate the derivative of this with respect to x1. So x1 squared plus dot 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 plus xn squared. And again, all this means is you differentiate with respect to the first variable and leave everything else constant. So you do 1 over 2 square root of x1 squared plus dot 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 plus xn squared and then times the derivative of x1 squared which is 2x1 and this cancels out and you get x1 over square root of x1 squared plus dot 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 plus xn squared. Okay, and well, let's do the same thing for x2, or you can scroll uh, fast forward if you want. So x1 squared plus x2 squared plus dot 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 plus xn squared with respect to x2. And what this becomes, again, 1 over 2 square root of your, all your things times 2x2, which again simplifies to get x2 over square root of x1 squared plus dot 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 plus xn squared. Okay? And of course you can see the pattern now, so fx1 is x1 over this square root, fx2 is x2 over this square root, so fxn is xn over this square root. So I get just to record, fx1 is x1 over the square root of squares. and then up to fxn is xn over the square root of squares. Good. So that thing is okay. Um, and by the way, let me just show you another very nice trick for this, because if you don't like square roots, you're in luck. Because you could avoid them if you want. So let's call this z. And notice z squared is x1 squared plus dot 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 plus xn squared. And if you want to find z x1, just use the Chen Lu, so in differentiate this with respect to x1. Then again, using the chain rule or Chen Lu, you get 2z partial z over partial x1. That just becomes 2x1. This cancels out, which tells you partial z over partial x1. That's x1 over a z. And z, I would like to remind you, is x1 over square root of x1 squared plus dot 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 plus xn squared. And similarly with every other thing, right? Zn would be xn over whatever square root you have. Okay, now this is, is still interesting. The stuff that intrigues me is actually, and I wonder uh, if there are more general conditions for which this is true, kind of why does that work? Okay, so remember we had our function f to be square root of this thing. Now, we have the partial derivatives. What if you take the following square root of 
fx1 squared plus dot 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 plus fxn squared. So, in other words, if you know what the gradient is, what if here you take the length of the gradient of this function? Then what is happening? Okay, then fx1 is x1 squared over, so in other words, you take x1 over this squared, so you square everything, and you get x1 squared over x1 squared plus dot 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 plus xn squared plus x2 squared over x1 squared plus dot 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 plus xn squared plus dot 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 plus xn squared over x1 squared plus dot 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 plus xn squared. And what you're left with is square root of x1 squared plus x2 squared plus xn squared over x1 squared plus x2 squared plus dot 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 plus xn squared. And notice this cancels out and you end up with square root of 1, which is 1. Kind of cool, huh? So if you take the square root of the sum of squares of the derivatives, you get 1. And I'm really curious why this is true. I know this is a circle, might have to do with level surfaces, but the fact that the gradient is exactly 1, that's in my opinion very surprising. Length of the gradient is exactly 1. My opinion is very surprising, but um, well maybe in the comments you can let me know if you have a solution to this. All right, I hope you like this little puzzle. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.